Our next unit is far more algebra-based than the last unit. What we're looking at this time are radicals. Well, what are radicals? You probably know radicals better as square roots. Okay. Uh, they're not the only thing. Square roots you can also do. So square root looks like that. Uh, there's also cube roots. Okay. Which we're not going to go into, but that would be a cube root. Any of these root powers are what we mean by radicals. Fourth root, fifth root, anything like that. So that's what we mean when we say radicals. This is the radical sign that was inside. It's called the radicand. So like the square root of 16, this is something you probably know. You know that the square root of 16 is 4 because 4 times 4 equals 16. Well, let me pose another question to you here. What is negative 4 times negative 4? That's also 16. Okay, so when we have that type of problem, we could also say that the square root of 16 could also be negative 4. So sometimes you'll see people say the square root of 16 is positive or negative 4. Okay, the positive is what we call the principal square root. Okay, anytime we look for the principal root, we're looking for the positive. Really, we only use this plus negative if we're trying to solve. Like if I had a problem that said, x equal or say uh, x squared equals 16 well then to solve that i would take the square root of both sides okay and that would give me x equals square root of 16 so x could be positive or negative 4. so that's the only time we really use that positive or negative if i'm just solving what you're know, trying to find the answer for square root of 16 i'm going to use 4. now be careful because that's different than the square root of negative 16. this does not exist or at least not a real number. Okay. Next year, you'll talk about what this means when you have a negative under here. That is not the same thing as negative square root of 16. Negative square root of 16 would be negative 4 because we take our principal root and we tack this negative. You multiply by negative 1. So it's negative 1 times the square root of 16, which would be negative 1 times 4. Okay. So be careful about the different way these things look. Now, to do square roots and to do radicals, we need to know our perfect squares. So I'm a big fan of trying to memorize the first few perfect squares. So 1, 4, 9, 27. List more of these perfect squares. Okay, List the first 13 if you can. Okay, so that's, whoops, I'm sorry. 1, 2, so that's 1, 2, 3, whoop, not 27, 16. Ha. Huh? 16 is 4 times 4, 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36, uh, 7 times 7, I'm going to read, yeah, 7 times 7 is 49, 8 times 8, 64, 9 times 9, 81, 10 times 10 is 100, 11 times 11 is 121, 12 times 12 is 144, 13 times 13 is 169, 14 times 14 196. So if you can get that far, you're doing really, really well. Okay. I try to get up to at least the top 13. These are important to know because by knowing these, remember 27 was a mistake. By knowing these, we can now break down other things. You had to know these when you were factoring as well. What we want to talk about is how do we reduce radicals? Square root of 50, for example, there is no square root of 50, but I do know 50 can be made by going 2 times 25. So then I could break that up as square root of 2, square root of 25. Now, I don't know what the square root of 2 is, so it stays. But the square root of 25 is 5. So this ends up being 5 radical 2. Okay, Let's look at 72. What makes 72? Well, I can go into a bunch of different things and pull out my calculator here. I go, well, 72. Can I divide by 4? Yeah, 4 and 18. So I go, I know that square root of 4, or 4 times 18. So that's the square root of 4 and the square root of 18. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. But wait a minute, can I break 18 down? I believe if I take 18 and divide by 9, that gives me 2. So now I've got 2, 9 times 2. So that still is 2 squared to 9 squared to 2. 
which gives me 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 2 is still 2. So we end up with 6 radical 2. Now we could have done that faster. If I'd realized that 72 is actually 36 times 2, I could have gotten here a whole lot faster. So I'll try to find quicker ways to do it, like 96. Maybe let me try 16. 16 and 6 makes 96. So I could say, hey, 16 times 6, and that's square root of 16, square root of 6, so that's 4 square root of 6. 6 can't break down anymore. Yeah, 2 times 3 makes 6, but neither 2 nor 3 are perfect squares. So that leaves me at that. Okay? So that's how we do these perfect squares. Uh, let's try a big one, 243. So let's see, 243, let me try 9. 9 and 27. Now I'm already thinking, wait a minute, 9 is going to do here too. So 243 and 81, 81 times 3. So that's how you can do a little quicker. So that's square root of 81, square root of 3, so that's 9, square root of 3. There's my answer. So I try to find a bigger one. Oh, 18, 18 is easy because we know 9 times 2 is 18. So square root of 9, square root of 2, 3 radical 2. Okay, 32. Let's see, 4 goes into 32. 4 goes into 32 8 times. So that gives me 4 times 8. So that's square root of 4, square root of 8, or 2 square root of 8. But 8 can be broken down. So the 2 stays out here. 8 can be broken down as 4 times 2. So that's 2 radical 4 radical 2. So now I've got 2 times 2 radical 2, and that gives me 4 radical 2. Remember, the 4 is outside radical. Once you use the radical up, it's no longer there. Okay. So you're going to try some of these. Uh, there's some delta math on reducing radicals. In fact, let's take a look at what that delta math looks like. So the first one's a guided, and if you take a look at what these problems look like, here they are, 288. So 288, i got to break that down. Let's try 16. Yeah, 16 and 18. 16 and 18. And I click on try, and it's going to go, great. Well, square root of 16 is 4, and that's going to leave me my 18 here. But I can break 18 down as 9 and 2. And it says, good job. Now what's square root of 9? Well, that's 3. I keep my 2 in the radical. And it's going to say, well, what's that going to equal then? That's going to equal 12 radical 2. And there we go. So I could submit that answer. Okay? And they're always going to ask you. The other kind of problem that you could look at is they're not going to guide you through it. They're just going to say, hey, what's the square root of 75? When well, the square root is 75, I could break down as 25 and 5. So that's 5 square root. See the little square root button there? 5. Submit that answer. Oh, wait a minute. That's not going to be right. 5 square root of 3. There we go. Submit that answer. There we go. Okay, so that's the idea. Well, perfect squares divide into 75. So you've got a couple things to try on this and go through it. Okay? That's your homework. Give it a try.